Hat lovers rejoice. You can grab your own custom color and design Bar Down Beauty's cap, courtesy of our friends at SodaStick.com. Naturally, in addition to the top tier Buttes gear, SodaStick.com has you covered for every Minnesota sporting swag flavor. Snake 15% off all purchases with code Bar Down Beauties at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporate Claremont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's going on? We've got a new take this week as we are wrapping up season two of Bar Down Beauties. Can you believe it? I certainly can't. Um, what a hell of a year. Another great uh, season that we had some really phenomenal, phenomenal guests, which we are going to dive into. I will break down some of my favorite guests, some of my favorite moments with each of those guests. Uh, but first, obviously, I want to thank all of you for helping us accomplish yet another season. Um, it was another kind of weird one, a shortened NHL season, but we made it through uh, each and every week. Thank you to all of our phenomenal guests who did join us, took time out of their day to hop on a Zoom call with us. Um, I don't know how we're going to keep that up. We will keep it up in season three, guys. I promise you that. We absolutely will. Um, but for now, let's take a look back at season two. Before I before I do that, don't forget, you can listen to this podcast episode on betteredge.com through their uh betting sports gambling app that's better edge b-e-t-t-o-r edge.com also code buttes b-e-a-u-t-s will get you a free ten dollars when you sign up so be sure to check it out there um but enjoy this wherever you're listening so we'll take a quick break when we come back my favorites it might be the off season but that doesn't mean you can't still shop bar down beauty's apparel get yourself a tank to add to your summer wardrobe or a bar down beauty sticker to slap on your water bottle to stay hydrated in the summer heat whatever you want we've got it all at our bar down beauty's teespring store okay so i'm gonna go back to our inaugural episode of season two we managed to get charlie Coyle, and how can you not love charlie Coyle? i know everyone remembers when he threw that puck to the little boy and he just absolutely loved it and charlie's just one of the best, one of my favorite things about Charlie and to remind him is his Boston accent. He's constantly, he kind of lost it there for a little bit when he was with the Minnesota wild. So naturally I had to ask him what it was like to be back home in Boston with the Bruins and uh, how the accent and, and being a Bostonian is coming along. Take a listen. Aside from family, what do you think the, your favorite thing about being back home? Is it Duncan? Is that your favorite donkeys? Is, are you pretty happy to have donkeys back? Yeah, donkeys, donkeys. <laughs> I, I'm not a big donkeys guy. I was never a big coffee guy. I just got into coffee, but I wasn't a big coffee guy. So did Jesse. Same. I she just, just started drinking coffee. Just went to Starbucks oh, for the first time last week ever in my entire life. Oh my God, you have me. That's, that's impressive. Thank you. So are you hooked on it now or what? I have had it every day since. So it, it's become a problem. Welcome Take to the club. Day. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Um... No, I mean, there was a few places where I like to eat. Um, you know, I like my sushi spot in Minnesota where I like to go. There's a few of them, but in the back here, I get to go to mine, you know, that I like to go to more often. And then, um, but, you know, I never really ventured into the city a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know my way around Boston before I started playing here. Really? Um, no, I GPS wherever <laughs> I go to the rink and back every day. Um, and so I, I figure my way out now just my way around town um and then in the area that we're living in is kind of has been kind of new and up and coming for the last i don't know 10 15 years and so there's a bunch of restaurants and, and new things to try so we're always kind of venturing out and trying new things like that and so i have my sushi spot you know literally a block away that i spend way too much time at way too much money at um but that's like my thing i don't really spend my money on a whole lot it's just sushi pretty much <laughs> you know you had mentioned before that your family thought you had kind of picked up a minnesota accent do you think you've lost that and have you has your boston accent come back a little bit stronger i don't know what do you guys think is you said hockey accent? earlier and it was for sure a boston hockey not a minnesota <laughs> hockey so i was like ah oh, he's officially transitioned we lost him guys we lost him he's yeah, <laughs> i got it back it's funny because like when you when you're out in minnesota and i'll catch myself every now and then like, i say minnesota you know and i'm like i'm, I'm not there anymore <laughs> I got to transition over, but you, and then I would always come back in the summertime when I was playing out in many, and 
And then you really, like, when I was living here, you don't hear the accents because you grew up in it. That's all you know. But then yeah. going to Minnesota, come back to it, you're like, you really, like, even my parents, I'm like, oh my gosh, they talk like <laughs> so different. It's crazy. <laughs> so I think it's definitely rubbed off me with them and then like my friends. And so there's, there's different words and that I'll catch myself and be like, oh my gosh, I'm back. You know, even when you just said parents, <laughs> you said it with a Boston accent. Did I? Like, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah you'll catch it every now. <laughs> it's funny, but it's like a little of both, but probably inch more towards Boston lingo now. It was great. We watched the video with you and Tricky doing the Boston thing back and forth. And honestly, it was like the best thing ever about donkeys and you throw in the Boston names and it was just, this is so beautiful. Like I just- That was us every day in in the ring. Like, I don't think I ever talked to Tricky, like just how we normally talk. Does anyone talk to Tricky normally though? That's the real thing. That's true. That's true. true. But that was our thing. And you just- push the accent so hard and so hard and like it was like it was so funny every day and then he used to send those to me I'd be like this is perfect I don't know about you guys but I was a huge ginormous gopher hockey fan growing up a large part of that is due to the fact that there wasn't the Minnesota Wild around for a good chunk of my childhood yes I'm that old in case we've all forgotten um but no that being said I looked up to Paul Martin and Keith Ballard. They were legendary gophers. So to get them on the podcast was such an honor. Um, but naturally we had to stir the pot a little bit, get them to chirp each other a little bit. That's what is great about college hockey. I think is the chirping even extends, uh, beyond your graduating and ice playing days. So first we had Paul on to talk about uh, him returning to school, something that Keith Ballard had done. And uh, he had a little chirp to toss at Keith about some coursework that he had to take. Then we followed up with Keith Ballard to see what Keith's rebuttal was. Take a listen. Did you talk to any other guys? I know Keith Ballard, I think, went back to the right and got his degree. Did you chat with any of the other guys? Say, is this hard? Is this something that I should really be doing? Or was there any uh, advice given? For sure. I, mean, I, I chatted with Stu Bickle a little bit and Ryan Batoni because they did yeah. the grad assistant before and they gave some good advice. And then I talked to Keith and it turns out his degree coming back was like underwater basket weaving. And <laughs> not, we're not as, as demanding clients. Sorry, Keith, to throw you under the bus. <laughs> That's amazing. Now I'm going to hit him up for like, uh, teach me how to do that. That sounds pretty great. <laughs> So he didn't have the curriculum that I needed to kind of help. So you didn't think about switching the degrees to underwater basket weaving after you heard that? Yeah, I thought about it. He sent me videos <laughs> over of some of the, the presentations he had to do. And I'm like, this is the college course. So <laughs> joining us now, one of the greatest gopher defensemen in all time and prolific in underwater basket weaving from what we hear. Um, <laughs> Mr. Keith Ballard. Keith, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. good. Thanks for joining us. Now, underwater basket weaving. We can't, we're not going <laughs> to jump around the questions here. We had Paul Martin on the podcast a couple weeks ago and you yes, know, he's back which... at, he's back at school. And we said, what are you, have you talked to some of your former buddies about going back to the U and what kind of classes to take? And he mentioned that <laughs> you chose underwater basket weaving as your education path when you went back to the U. <laughs> it was close. It was close, and I did listen to the episode, and I did talk to Paul after. Um, No, I took, you know, when I went back about five years ago, and college at 33 is a lot different than college at 18. A little bit. Um, I think part of it is realizing what you actually need to know and apply to your life. Yeah. So I took a lot of classes that were very helpful. I did take a couple that anybody who's graduated college has taken a couple. <laughs> Just I think schedule the fillers, one I, right? The one, yes. The <laughs> one I took was called The Care and Nutrition of a Companion Animal. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. It yeah. was online. It fulfilled the credit or three credits or whatever <laughs> and some sort of obligation I needed. Well, I just got to say, in, it in was... Paul's defense, he threw you under the bus and then immediately apologized for throwing you under the bus. So that's like what a good friend does. You're going to jab well, a little bit. You're going to make fun, but I'm, you're immediately going to apologize. I'm going to be honest. You're not going to find a better human being than Paul Martin, <laughs> even though he did give me a hard time. <laughs> he's one of the best people I've ever, I'm so thankful to be his, be his friend and to, one, I've played with him, but two, we've grown close even past college, and he's an outstanding person. I, I don't know if I've seen a better athlete than Paul Martin <laughs> in my life, and he doesn't look like it. He, looked like, he, looks, like he, just, he looks like he just left the Beatles concert. <laughs> that's, that's actually really accurate, like incredibly and, accurate. 
I watched him sitting in the passenger side, and this was in college, of a Jeep Wrangler with the, they had the top off, going 30 miles an hour, somebody threw a football to him and he caught it out the, out the side of the car one-handed. Wow, that's amazing. And, but he was an outstanding, he quit hockey for a bit. Yeah. Right. And all of a sudden then he's on the varsity team and then he's played <laughs> 900 games in the NHL. <laughs> Okay. So I don't even know how to select just a segment of this episode. You guys need to run and go listen to this in case you somehow missed it. Um, we secured doc Emmerich. Yes. The doc Emmerich. It was such a treat. I think the most amazing thing to me about that interview was he knew something about me. You know, he he's retired, but not really retired. Clearly he did his research before hopping on the podcast with us. And it was such an honor. And obviously that voice and just everything about him. He's just a wonderful, wonderful human being. So take a listen to a bit of that episode and uh, heck, listen to the whole thing. You guys don't even listen just to a clip, but listen to the full episode. But here's a, here's a clip of that for you uh, that may have missed it. Take a listen. Even know if it's appropriate to use my own voice or attempt at adjectives to introduce our next guest, who is an absolute American treasure. He's also also recently authored and released a book of his own life off the mic. It is my greatest honor to introduce Mr. Doc Emmerich. Doc, how are you? I'm good. It's great to be on with the two of you. <laughs> and I see a little holly. Uh, was that a holly decoration? I see a Merry Christmas behind one of you. Oh, yeah. I that's... see red and green <laughs> behind the other. Uh huh. And and uh, I, and I know enough about and, and you have a green sweater on. And I know enough <laughs> about you to know that you have in 2017 written something about animals and I should tell you that every penny of whatever I get from the book goes to the hands-on care of creatures so uh, we are all kindred spirits here and we love hockey which is wonderful heck we yeah do. you know I have to say again are you sure you're retired because <laughs> the research that you put in it's like it's just old news to you right is it, is it just, hard to break those habits <laughs> yeah I guess it is it's fun though it's fun <laughs> learning about both of you and about and, and, and about your show yeah. And the fact that I get to be on it because any show that Bruce Boudreaux has been on, did he review, <laughs> did he review movies when he was on with you? Only, you know, just a, we talked about, about movies. Hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to bring up, do you know, doc, that he fell asleep in a movie theater with um, Kevin Gorg, FSN analyst in another Minnesota yep. weather place. We had to chirp him about that a little bit. I know he usually, he's like, <laughs> I was the one exception. I was very tired. And we're like, okay, Bruce. <laughs> We had a uh, we had hockey day in America was in Minnesota two years ago St Louis at Minnesota I'll never forget a couple of things happened uh, we had um, uh, Zach Parisi brought his his jersey from youth hockey <laughs> and uh, Pat Falloon brought his jersey from St Louis youth hockey so we showed the kids jersey but also we talked to Bruce before the game and the subject came to slap shot and of course you know <laughs> being a part of the movie but. Uh, one of the stories that he told that I don't know if he told you or uh, or whether it was it was not in his book, because I read his book cover to cover. It, he uh, he said that one of the days they uh, they had the daily uh, rushes where you would go in and you would look at what had been shot that day. And he said one of my teammates and I went in and the only other two people there watching were Paul Newman and George Roy Hill, the director. And so he said, we sat in the row behind the two of them as they were watching what all had been shot that day. And Paul leaned back and he saw us there. And he said, you know, I just finished a movie called The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean. I don't know if it's going to be very good, <laughs> but this movie's going to be great. <laughs> okay, so I know I'm probably going to regret selecting this episode because I'm not entirely sure that we will live it down, but here it goes. Anyway, we had Mr. Kevin Falness on, um, earlier this year and he's great. He's hilarious. Everyone. We like to, you know, give him a hard time, but he is so fantastic because he gives everyone a hard time, which is exactly what we wanted to talk about. We had to talk about his social media persona, his long list of Zach Halverson screenshots. Um, here's what he had to say about the online personality that he has created and grown accustomed to. Take a listen. That's amazing because the hashtag more me uh, hashtag was yeah, no. not the case. But, you know, I, 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 I hope the people, people know that's, that's really tongue in cheek. I don't mean any of that. When I rip on Russo, I don't mean it. When I mean hashtag more me, I really don't mean it. It's, it's just... 
it's fun. It's uh, especially on social media. How anyone could take anything seriously <laughs> on social media is beyond me. I mean, Facebook has just become a pit of despair. So cesspool. I go into that stuff with a, t a cesspool. I go into that thing with tongue in cheek, and, and most of the things I say are unbelievably sarcastic, especially on uh, social media. So, uh, you know, poor Zach Halverson. I, I mean, he just and I banty him back and forth. But it's all in fun. I actually got permission from him to do it. So I'm not a bully. We're just having a good time. You have so many pictures of him in horrible faces. Of <laughs> and of Dave Schwartz well, or Dan Myers or yeah. <laughs> I think we have a couple. Well, here's my secret. I've got my, uh, on my phones, I go to my all phone and I got my uh, albums. And so I've got, well, there's my brother-in-law, Jim Griefy. Uh, hey, Audra, how you doing? I don't know if you can see that. There's, hi, Audra. There's one of her. Mike Grimm decided, hey, you know what I should do? I should take a selfie. So I screen captured Mike Grimm just making a weird face. He took the picture. He's got no one to blame by him but himself, but I kept it. So, yeah, that's basically And then when you talk about Zach Halverson, as I page through here, I've got a few of Zach Halverson, but, you know, the real culprit here is Meat Sauce, who sends me roughly <laughs> three dozen pictures of the guy a day because they work together. He says, here's another incriminate. Like this morning, he had pizza sauce on his, uh, <laughs> on his shirt. He sends me a picture. I took a picture of it, and I go, who did it better? But here we go. Here's my Zach Halverson file. <laughs> As I go. Brrr. Oh, we're it's scrolling. We're scrolling. Wow. One, wow. One's even better than the next. See? Wow. Well, that's just a tip of the iceberg. So It's crazy because looking back at this guest list, guys, I'm even amazed with us. I'm not going to lie. Not to pat ourselves on the shoulder too much but Pat Pat, because my next favorite guest was Mike Madano. Yes. The Mike Madano. Um, he was so fantastic, obviously a big part of the Minnesota wild today, uh, but a larger part of the then Minnesota North stars and a big part of Minnesota's favorite movie, the mighty ducks. Here's what he had to say about still collecting that Disney paycheck from his one line. Take a listen a little bit. You also solidified yourself as a Minnesotan in Minnesotans hearts with a brief appearance in Mighty Ducks. Do you, in fact, remember your line at all? Oh, yeah. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I heard you were a farmer. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Beautiful. Six letters. Six words that kind of... Uh, people know me more from the Mighty Ducks than they know me from playing, so... Even kids that are 8, 9, 10, they still love the movie. They're like, oh, you were, you know, weren't you in Mighty Ducks? And they have no clue that I actually really played. Um, but yeah, Mike Madonna, the actor and hockey player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, you know, so you have a speaking part in a movie, so you do get a SAG card and you become an official member of the Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> and it, it, you do start getting residuals. So Basil and I had both speaking parts. And so, you know, when this movie first came out, it was, you know, it was a real kind of a... Um, like a cultural kind of thing. Like everybody was talking about it, it was really wasn't promoted that well. It kind of came out, you know, obviously before the, the team went to Anaheim and started there. So, um, um, so we, we, Baz and I got these checks from Disney. We're like, I was like, man, this is, this is like for our residuals for the movies. Like, <laughs> and so we, we would get checks, checks for, you know, I don't know, at the start of this whole deal, we would get them for, every two months for, you know, four or five grand or something from signed from Walt Disney. And um, so I think it just came up on the 25th anniversary, I think. The 20, yeah, that sounds 20th? right. Mm -hmm. Was it the 20th anniversary or something, maybe? Um, and so, again, there's a big barrage of the game, the, the movie, and it still get played on direct TV. So, so now the checks have come like maybe once or twice every two years and they're for like 54 bucks or <laughs> something like that. So it's my final favorite, another icon, another role model for me, Miss Linda Cohen. Um, everybody knows her. Everybody loves her. She loves hockey, but she also loves being a mom. And obviously me being a young mom right now, um, I wanted to learn from her. And the thing that struck me most is that she actually said, she always puts mom first. And I think sometimes that's something I struggled with. So to hear this role model be an additional role model for me in motherhood, it was truly incredible. So take a listen. I want to uh, turn the conversation a little bit here. You talked 
talked about how in your Twitter bio, you put mom first because that's what yeah. is most important to you. Jesse's a mom of two, very almost uh, three. Uh, nice. I'm only 25, but I want to have kids yes. someday. And uh, as we all know, there's this misconception with women, especially in jobs like this, that you can't do both. Um, you have done both and you take a lot of pride in having done both. Yeah. Uh, what was that like for you, especially, you know, early on when that was still kind of a wild concept that you could do both of those things? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am, you hit it on the head. That is my most amazing accomplishment in my life. You know, um, having, raising these two amazing children, but also having the balance in my life and able to do something I love as well. Uh, if I did not do it that way, sure, I'd be making more money. No question about it. You know, if I just put my, it's true. Loyalty does not pay ladies. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if I would have, uh, you know, because I didn't jump at other opportunities. I didn't do grass is always greener. I'm not mm -hmm. saying there was a point in my mind thinking about it, like feeling, you know, eh, it's not fair, you know, type mm -hmm. of feeling, you know, like that kind of, we all feel it. We all, mm -hmm. you know, kind of rethink our decisions and, and we hope we made the right ones. But looking back, I know I did because my kids were able to be raised in one place, have friends for life, um, you know, not moving around. And also, you know, early on when I was married, I was married to someone who definitely was and still is a great father. And, you know, he took a step back uh, in his career because he knew my career was bigger. And so he was, he would work from home a lot in some key times. Now, are, the, are there things I regret? Yes, there was a point in my life, in my career, honestly, that I probably traveled more than I should have. I could have said no to that. You know, whether it's making appearances or celebrity golf events, mm -hmm. you know, there were different things where I, I wish I was home more, but I made, you know, I made that choice at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Oh, you know, I got caught up in it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I have to be seen. Like, you know, have people telling you, you know, like, you know, Linda, you really should be here. You really should be seen, you know, you know, back in the day, that's what it was about before all of this and Zoom <laughs> and everything like that yeah. and social media, because people didn't see you pre-social media. You know, you had to actually, imagine that guys, you actually had to be <laughs> an event. You had to be there, you know, your body. Yeah. And so I got caught up in that and that little, you know, fandom of that. Um, and, you know, if I could do that part over again, I wouldn't have gone away as much as I did. Um, maybe that had to, had something to do with my marriage, you know, failing, but you know, it was a great run. I was married a long time, um, you know, over 20 years. And so raised two amazing kids, had two amazing kids. So I don't regret that either, but you can do it. Everyone can do it. But yeah, mom is first and foremost, uh, for sure. You're right. And Alexis, you're too young, but yes, well done. <laughs> Thank you. And the only time I regret it is when I'm like, pumping in between intermissions during the game yeah. because I'm oh. like, oh, I have to do this. And I, yeah. This is what we're By doing. By the way, good for you because I remember doing that in the ESPN ladies club many, <laughs> right? many, many, many times. And you're like, oh God, but it's what am to, I it, doing? It, I know. it hurts if you it, don't. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, or God forbid I go into the locker room and there's any leaking or showing, right? Oh, I'd be like, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. And it's the guys that would get more uncomfortable. I'm sure they'd be like, what's going on yeah, here? They're like, <laughs> I know. Especially the young ones who have no clue what's going yes. on, you know? Which is where it's been nice that the Wild have the older players because most of them are dads. So <laughs> exactly. they always really understood. Now that And make a joke shifting. about it. Yeah. yeah. Make a joke about it. Like say to them, I mean, like, you know, I know you go hard to the boards, but can you breastfeed in between periods like I do? Exactly. Exactly. That's too funny. And I think that's a great reminder because I think right now, especially where I'm at in my career, sometimes I do probably put my career first a little bit yeah. more than I would like to. I mean, the kids kids are four and two. And then like Alexis mentioned, there's a third on the way. And it's funny though, because they're still a little young and they're trying to figure out what mommy does. Right. <laughs> right. Like I know my, my oldest lately has been putting on, um, beads or shoes. And the, he says, I'm going to hockey because that's what he Aww. sees mommy do. So, I mean, it's definitely fun, but I do, I think that's something that I'm learning to embrace more is say no to some of those outside things and say yes, yes to the kiddos, right? And <laughs> yes. you know, combine it both. They love hockey, so we're very fortunate or unfortunate <laughs> depending on how you look at it financially. Hey guys, this is producer Fred. I just wanted to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app.
Well, that's going to do it for Jesse's favorites. Those are just small, small segments of my favorite episodes from this past season. Um, obviously every episode has been phenomenal. There were so many, it's hard to select just a couple. Um, but certainly go back, give them all a listen, give season one, a listen while you're there. You know what? Why the heck not? Um, they were all great. Again, thank you to each and every one of you who helped make all of these episodes possible, who helped make all of these episodes great. And to, again, our guests who joined us, uh, we truly, truly appreciate it. Final shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. That's a one year wrap on uh, our time with Talk North. We absolutely love that. So thank you to them. Shout out to Soda Stick, our presenting sponsor. Don't forget Bar Down Beauties. We'll get you 15% off all purchases. Uh, shout out to Better Edge, B-E-T-T-O-R Edge.com, where you can now listen to Bar Down Beauties podcast on their app. And you can also go take a gamble, take a bet, uh, use code Butes, B-E-A-U-T-S to get a free $10. Shout out to Jim Beam, always drinking you, always going down smooth. And shout out to uh, Tony Hoagland at statefarminsurance.com. That'll do it. Again, Alexis will have her favorites next week. Until then, have a great week. Bye, guys.